Hello, good evening. How are you? Okay, thank you for being in time. Uh, Rafael, Jensi, and Zuma. Let's see who else is here. Claudia, Jose, Isaias. Okay, thank you for being here. Now we're about to begin the class. Uh, before beginning the class, I do, I will let you know if you have any question about the platform. I guess you had some problems with it. So let me check it right now. Let me see if it loads. Uh, have you completed uh, the first section? Yes. Did you have any problem with it? Just for the 1.2, the same, same problem as we said uh, so before. Okay, the same problem, 1.2, let me see here. Okay, we are going to fix it because I thought that probably you wouldn't have, you, you won't have any problem, but it seems that it's still showing some issues here. Wine point two. It says asking someone H is often considered rude. It's often considered rude to ask someone's H. Yes, it is like this. Okay, I will take a screenshot and I will report this. Okay. Let me see here. I will paste it here and I will report it later. Okay, do you have any problem with, let's see the other section. One point, well, 1.5, I guess that you don't have any problem, right? Did you have any problem with 1.8 with number six? I don't have any problem. No problems, okay. She told me that they were getting married. Let me see here. She told me that they were getting married or she told me they were getting married. Let's try with this one, with the first one. She told me, not the second one. Okay, yes, correct. So she told me they were getting married. That is the one that is accepted. Okay, I will report the issue that you have in 1.2, the three. Number three, I'm so sorry for that, but I will check it later, okay? Sorry for that. Okay, now we're going to begin with the class. I guess that those were the only problems. If you have any problem with any other exercise, 1.11 or 1.4, or if it is not showing anything or something like the reading or the, the listenings, uh, let me know, okay? And I will report that. Okay, yesterday we were checking or we were studying about the gerunds and infinitives, right? What is a gerund? Do you remember that? What is a gerund? A gerund? A, yes, a gerund, what is a gerund? Uh, Jerome, is the ing form of a verb? Yes, it's the ing of a verb that will be a present participle. And what is an infinitive? What the is verb an infinitive? in base form. Exactly, it's the verb in base form with a particle to, right? Exactly. So, gerunds are. Uh, these ver verbals that end in ing and infinitives is two plus verb. Exactly, perfect, very good. 
And gerunds and infinitives, what uh, we mentioned that they can function as subjects and what else? They can be subjects, right? And what else? Pueden ser sujetos o objetos, right? Subjects or objects. Very good. Let's see. Who can give me an example of a gerund? In a sentence, if it is possible. Here I have one sentence. Okay. I enjoy reading the Bible. Very good. I enjoy reading the Bible. Very good. So we have a sentence there. I will write it here just for you to see it also. Very good. I enjoy reading the Bible. What is the gerund there? Where is the gerund? Reading. Reading, exactly. Rafael says, meeting with all my family, it's so special. Let's see, I will copy the sentence here. Okay, what is the, where is the gerund here? Meeting with all my family, it's so special. Meeting. Meeting, exactly. As a subject. As a subject, exactly. What is the problem here? Is it is just is not it? Exactly, it's just is right. Meeting with all my family is so special. Very good. Uh, can you give me another sentence with uh, infinitives, please? Me, teacher. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Infinitive. I want to dance with you. I want to dance with you. Very good. I want to dance with you. Where is the infinitive? To dance. To dance. To dance, exactly. To dance. Another one? I need to take a break. <laughs> Very good. I need to take a break. Exactly. I need to take a break. Perfect. Where is the infinitive there? To take. to take, right, perfect. So in these cases, they are, uh, they are objects here, right? I want to, I need to, and also these verbs are followed by infinitives. This one is a subject here, and reading after enjoy, we need a general, right? I enjoy reading, I enjoy eating, I enjoy watching TV, right? Very good, perfect. I don't know if you have any questions about yesterday's class. Preguntas? No questions? No questions. Okay. We're going to review a little bit right now. So uh, it says here, gerunds and infinitives. Let's see. Asuma, are you able to read the presentation? Yeah, teacher. Okay, can you read uh, the information here, please? Uh, the, the first ones. Yes, the one, two, three, yes. Okay. Uh, zero and infinitive. I'm not very good at remembering names. That is giving up eating junk food. Driving at night, it's very I don't know. tiring. Tiring. Mm -hmm. Driving at night, it's very tiring. Mm -hmm. Shopping is my favorite thing to do on weekends. Mm -hmm. I hate not beginning on time for things. I don't mind getting up early. Very good. I don't mind getting up early. Very good. Perfect. So in these cases, we are checking just gerunds, right? As we can see, they are very similar to the ones you give me. 
they are uh, subjects, right? And also they are objects of prepositions. And also I hate, right? I hate, after hate, we can write a general, right? I hate not being on time for things. I don't mind. I don't mind getting up early. Perfect. So we can use it after prepositions and phrasal verbs as the subject of a sentence and after some verbs, hate, spend, don't mind. So we need to learn those verbs uh, to know, right? If it is going after, if we, if we need to write a, a gerund after those. And we have here, uh, let's see, Ana Maria, can you read the, the information here? Sure. Common verbs that take the gerund include admit, avoid, deny, dislike, enjoy, feel, oh, feel like, finish, hate, keep, like, love, mind, miss, practice, prefer, recommend, spend time, stop, suggest, and phrasal verb, give up, go on. Mm -hmm. The negative German, not plus verb plus ing. The infinitive, my uh -huh. apartment, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, okay. My apartment is very easy to find. Simon is saving money to buy a new, to buy a new car. My sister has never learned to drive. Try not to make noise. Exactly, very good. So the infinitive, eh, we can see here different cases, right? After adjectives, we can find them after adjectives, like in the first sentence, easy, right? Easy is an adjective. My apartment is very easy to find. And to express a reason or purpose, right? Simon is saving money to buy a new car. And after some verbs, like one need learn, my sister has never learned to drive. Try not to make noise, try, right? So we have uh, different verbs like afford, agree, decide, expect, forget, help, hope, learn, need. A lot of verbs. And after these verbs, we need to write infinitives. So we have a long list of them. And remember the negative infinitive is not to, right? Like try not to make noise. Try don't to make noise. No, right? Try not to. Very good. So this is a review from yesterday's class. It says uh, more verbs take the infinitive than the gerund. These common verbs can take either the infinitive or gerund with no difference in meaning. So if some of the verbs, as you already know, they take both, right? And it says here that there is no difference. It's the same. Start, right? It started to rain or it started raining. It's the same. And it says that there is a verb plus person plus infinitive, right? Like there is a pronoun or a person there that we can use uh, uh, before the infinitive. Like, can you ask the manager to come? She told him not to worry. I want you to do this now. We really like you to come. These are some uh, rules that we need to follow. And um, let me see here. It says the base form, right? The base form. Okay. I don't know if we explained this yesterday. I guess we did, but really, really fast. Uh, the base form or the verb infinitive, we can use it there, right? With uh, modal verbs. After modal verbs, we have an infinitive, but it's a verb infinitive. I can't drive. We must hurry. We don't say I can to drive, right? Or we must to hurry. There is an infinitive there, but we don't write, we, it's without it too. Also with verbs like make and let, right? She always makes me laugh, not makes me to laugh, right? Or my parents didn't let me go, right? Let me go out last night. So uh, there is a, the infinitive is there, but it's a verb, inf a verb infinitive. And also uh, there are other verbs that take gerund or an infinitive, but the meaning is different, right? Like try, try to be on time, like make an effort and try doing yoga, right? Like try to do something new, right? Remember to call him, don't forget, or I remember meeting him years ago. I have a memory of it. 
So some verbs like try and remember, they are kind of different. Now, do you have any questions about this? Preguntas? No, no questions. Perfect. That's what I wanted to hear. It seems that uh, we already passed this, so we shouldn't have any problem. Now, uh, just like this, we have uh, this exercise just to remember gerunds and infinitives. So let's see who is the last one. Vamos a ver quién está de último aquí. Rodrigo Antonio. Are you there, Rodrigo? Rodrigo, can you hear me? No, okay, let's see, Nady. Nady Ibis Mendes. Can you hear me, Nady? Hi. Okay, now I want you to help me to complete these sentences in the correct form, right? I need you to tell me if it is a gerund or an infinity, according to the rules we studied, right? So it says, it is important for me spending or to spend time with my family? Uh, infinitive. Infinitive, to spend. Okay, let's yes. see. Exactly why? Because, because uh-huh. Why is it an infinitive? Because. Because. because it's talking about a purpose, right? Very good. It's talking about a purpose, right? A reason. It is important for me to spend time with my family. Thank you, Nady. Let's see, Kathy Soriano. Are you there, Kathy? Yes. Now, number two, it says applying apply for a job can be complicated. Which one is the correct one? Applying for a job. Exactly, applying for a job because it's a subject, right? And subjects mostly are gerunds. Let's see, Diego, are you there, Diego? Uh, yes. Perfect, number three says, the manager asked me not saying or not to say anything about the downsizing. Which one, not saying or not to say? Uh, not to say. Not to say why? Why do we choose not to say? Uh, después sigue el, el, el anything, anything. Yes, after it's anything, exactly. Anything and also there is a noun, but also because asked is followed by a uh, infinitive and also uh, we have a pronoun right between, right? Ask me not to, very good. Not to say, very okay, good, okay. exactly. Let's see, uh, Jose Francisco, are you there? Yes. Okay, Jose Francisco, number four, my boss wants me start or to start work earlier. What is the correct one? To start. To start. Very good. Wants me to start. Exactly. Let's see. Rodrigo Daniel. Are you there? Yes, teacher. Okay. Number five. Be careful not asking or not to ask her about her boyfriend. They broke up. Not Which asking. one is correct? Not asking. Are you sure? No. <laughs> Very good. Let's see. Not to ask, right? Be careful not to ask her, right? Very good. Let's see. Jose Isaias. Number six, Jose. We kept working or we kept to work until we finished? We kept working. Why? Until we finished. Why do we choose working? Uh, 
Oh, let me see. Because we have a adjective. Where? Where is the adjective? Keep. Keep. It's not an adjective. It's a verb. Um. Yes. So it is correct. It's because keep, right? But after keep, we need to write a gerund. That's why, right? So keep working. Very good, Jose. Claudia, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, number seven is for you. Dave is very good at solving or to solve logic problems. Which one? Uh, Dave is very good at solving logic problems. At solving, let's see. Yes, at solving. Why? Why do you think we, we choose solving and not to solve? Honestly, my logic is that sounds good for me, but maybe it's for the um, preposition at. Exactly. I think that sometimes we, we listen, right? And we have some of some of you probably have internalized English already. And when you listen to it, you said that is the correct way because it sounds good, right? It sounds correct. But it's because we have uh, heard this information before probably but grammatically is because we have a preposition at right the preposition at there and we need to use a gerund after that but very good claudia perfect alejandra are you there yes teacher alejandra number eight is for you the best thing about weekends is not going or not to go to work Not to go to work. Not to go to work. Let's see. Not going, right? The best thing about weekend is not going. So it's object of about, right? Very good. Let's see, Gen C. Gen C, are you there? Yeah, teacher. Okay, Gen C. Number nine is for you. Lila gave up modeling or to model when she had a baby. It's modeling. Why? Um, because um, they they are a uh, preposition. Mm -hmm. Very good. There is a preposition there. If the preposition is up, right? Leila gave up modeling. Very good. Very good. Let's see who is who else is here. Yes. Uh, Jose Francisco, are you there? Yes. Yeah. Okay, Jose Francisco. Number ten is for you. I took a training course to learning or to learn about the new software. To learn. To learn exactly. I took a training course to learn about the new software, perfect. Let's see. Now it says complete with a verb form. I'm sorry, I cannot see. Let me see here, let me read it here. Complete with a verb from the list in the correct form. Oh, it's almost the same, right? It's almost the same. So we have it here. For example, I like to set up my own company, right? So we can use, um, we need to use the correct form, right? To set up or is an infinitive, right? For example, my parents are planning uh, before they are 65. What is the verb we need to use in that sentence, in number one? Retire. My parents are planning re re work. Exactly, retire. And is uh, an infinitive or a gerund? An infinitive. An infinitive. An infinitive? Okay, let's see. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, to retire. Very good. To retire. Thanks. My parents are planning 
to retire before they are 65. Number two, Rob spends three hours to work and back every day. Commuting. Commuting, let's see. Yes, commuting, right? Do you know the meaning of commuting? What is the meaning? Move from a, a point to another one in a... Ex in a vehicle, right? Exactly, that is the meaning of commuting. Commuting, commuting. So it's like, yes, it's like travel, right? To travel from one place to another. Number three, Mark's wife told him about the problems he had at work. Which words we will need to use there? Not to worry. Not to worry, let's see. Exactly, number three, not to worry. So uh, Mark's wife told him not to worry, right? Not to worry, told, tell, remember, tell. After tell, infinitive, right? And also we have a, a pronoun between the two, uh, the, the infinitive and the verb, right? So that is a hint that we need to use an infinitive. Next one, number four. Did you remember the door? Which verb? Lock. Lock, lock. right? Lock. lock. Okay, so is did you remember to lock or did you to remember lock. locking? To lock. lock. To lock, right? To lock. Did you remember to lock? Very good. Number five. In the end, I decided the shoes because they were very expensive. Not to buy. Not, not buy. to, not to, not, buy. Buy. not to buy. Not to buy. Let's see. Not to buy. Exactly. So that is the negative of the infinitive. Number six. The manager lets us early on Fridays. Leave. To, to live. live. To live or living? To live. To live. Exactly right. Let us to live. But why do we write it live only? Why? Why do because we write live? Because of the subject. What, what subject? Porfirio? Uh, us. The let us. Mm, so, so. Remember that, for example, in verbs like let or make, we don't use uh, to live, right? We use the verb infinitive. Usamos el infinitivo, pero sin el tú. Para verbos que, por ejemplo, let, make, o modal verbs. Para ellos, después de esos verbos, vamos a utilizar el infinitivo, pero sin el tú, ¿verdad? Without the tú. Why? Because it's a verb, but it's a rule, right? After modal verbs and after let or make, we need to write just the base form of the verb, live. So the manager let us leave early on Fridays. Number seven, all employees must a jacket and tie at work. To wear. To, to wear? To wear, to wear. To wear, okay, let's see. Yes, it's uh, wear, but only wear. wear. Why? Because it's a model. Exactly, because it's a model. Must is a model. And we need to use wear. All employees must wear a jacket and tie at work. Number eight, please try any more mistakes in the report. Please try not to make. Very good. Not to make, exactly. Not to make more mistakes in the report. Mm -hmm. And the last one, I don't wow. mind overtime during the, the week. Mm -hmm. I don't mind. Work. 
to work. Yes, actually, I don't mind to work or I don't mind working. It's okay. Both are okay. I don't mind to work or I don't mind working overtime during the week. Perfect. Very good. Do you still have questions about uh, gerunds and infinitives? ¿Aún tienen preguntas de los gerunds and infinitives? Do you still no. have? No. Just, just about the rule that you already told um, about after a model, where mm -hmm. after let and after make, we use an infinity pair without two. Exactly. Right. Correct. So we don't say uh, let us l to live, right? So let us live. So for example, with make, right? Making me, you make me. To wait? No, you made me wait. You made me wait. So those will be some examples, right? Do you still uh, have another question? Alguien uh, más? Somebody else? Elio, your camera is kind of blurry. Why? Is it colder? Or is it hot? Your camera is kind of blurry. Se ve borrosa su cámara. ¿Por qué hace calor o por qué hace frío? <laughs> kind of blurry, right? Yeah, I thought it was a filter, but now, right? Okay, very good. Let's continue. Today, we are going to talk about um, compliments, right? Uh, about social situations, right? For example... Um, I don't know. There is a word that is being in social network that is kind of, I don't know if it is good, a good term or a bad term, but some people describe these people like Karens. Have you heard about that? Karens. Like you found a Karen. Yes, right. That there are Karen like Karen and the cat. Karen and the cat. Yes, exactly. Complicated like people. Complicated people. Exactly that they get very angry and they tell you no because it's my right and you have to do it right and you have to be polite right you have to be okay respectful right because you cannot you cannot overreact like this per that's these people are doing so have you had any anything like that in your daily life or any time yes a lot <laughs> uh what happened to you Anna yes. Maria well in my case <laughs> Uh, I usually receive more than 30 calls mm -hmm. in the day. So imagine maybe the the 50% is uh, from people. Well, sometimes they told me or they um, tell my coworkers or my colleagues, I need to speak with somebody in my in my same level, or I need to speak with somebody in US. I don't want to speak with you because you are in Belize or you are in Latin America. It's like, okay, call back. <laughs> <laughs> in a polite way, right? In a so, polite way. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit difficult, but you try to focus on your, your, uh, uh, on your job and not, and the people, because. How do you say el pan de cada día? <laughs> el pan, yeah, it's uh, like. The, uh, daily base? Daily or, basis, yeah, it's your daily, daily basis. basis. <laughs> exactly, that's, and do you, do you have the same situation as Ana Maria Porfirio? Yeah, yeah, exactly the same, but the good part sometimes to don't completely know English is that, when they are start yelling at you, you don't understand them and you only say, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yes, it's very complicated. You you work also in a call center also? Yeah. Oh, okay, I understand. So you receive a lot of calls like angry people that you need to solve their problems, right? Yeah, uh, not too much calls because I'm working in a tech support department, but Yes, sometimes when the computer is completely down, so it, 
that that people is frustrated and they think that we have the the uh, fault. fault. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I understand. It's kind of complicated, right, to, to deal with people like that, even when they, it's worse when they, they don't want to listen to you, right? So you try to explain like the solution and now I want it now. I want it solved now, right? I want the solution now. So yes, it's kind of complicated. So we are going to talk a little bit about this. This is the vocabulary that we are going to, to, to check right now. Uh, thank you for your experiences because it's really important to share that. And also because we talk in a different language, right? And they know, they they can notice that probably you don't have like a very good English, like a native speaker. And they tell you, oh no, these people, they don't know anything, right? They won't do anything. So that is not true. That is that is being biased, right? For, because you don't, you cannot speak correctly. But actually you do because you understand, you can provide, you can convey your ideas. So that is the important thing. So it's, I know it's kind of frustrating, but- yes, uh, we are... it is because for it... example, uh, uh, well, for example, once I received a call and the customer told me, sorry, I cannot understand you anything. And I was asking them a lot of questions and he was answering to me. So, but- at the end, he told me, oh, sorry, I cannot understand to you. Okay, you can call back. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> something like uh, things like that. And sometimes, where are you located? And mm -hmm. I try to say in Houston, Texas. No, you were located in, <laughs> you in were Central located. America. Mm, okay, I don't trust in you. I need to talk with somebody in the U.S. Okay. Exactly. You can okay. Back. The, <laughs> the better part, uh -huh. the better part is when someone from Latin America try to speak with you, and they act like they are American. Oh yes, that is so <laughs> disgusting and and annoying because, for example, oh my name is Antonio Oparos, and when I check. Uh, oh, Antonio Perez, but I try to follow his or her game, right? Oh, Antonio Perez. Okay, I totally understand. Oh, Mary Gonzalez. Okay, <laughs> Mary Gonzalez. But I have a lot of colleagues that are really bad. <laughs> so, yeah, I kind of read. Yeah. Ah, Mario Gonzalez. Okay, what do you want? What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. no. <laughs> <laughs> in my case, <laughs> in my uh -huh. case, I don't receive calls, but I have to call the airlines. Uh, and most of the airlines, they have their call centers in Philippines or in India or in Vietnam. <laughs> their accent is not too good to understand. Yeah. And one time, I, I think that is this Vietnam Airlines, I think. I had to call them and they are located also at Vietnam and the accent it's a little <laughs> <laughs> um I couldn't understand most of the of what the the, the agent said. It's uh, I can understand more the the in from the people from India but from Vietnam. <laughs> exactly. And what do you do when you don't understand like do you do you do you, do you ask them to repeat the, the information or I try to change uh, the the words or mm -hmm. or what I'm asking so the, the agent can tell me with other words. <laughs> so but it's a little bit difficult because uh it, I work for a travel agency. So I had to deal with people from around the world. So there are a lot of accents, but we receive more um, flights from India, but also from Iran, Vietnam, Philippines, but <laughs> the, the, the accents are very tricky. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of accents, right? A lot of yeah. accents. Yeah, it's kind of complicated. You see, I know that you have difficult jobs sometimes and 
uh, even though if you speak a good English, sometimes it's difficult to understand it, right? It says, this raining hard, maybe energy go out, maybe. Oh, okay, Rafael. Okay, no problem. So we are going to check a little bit of this vocabulary. Um, and we are going just to review a little bit of it, right? So we have here this, this information, you can find it in the platform. For example, what is negative and what is neutral and what is a positive, right? For example, a compliment. Is that negative or positive or neutral? I think it's positive, right? Compliment, complimenting someone, compliment. An insult, an insult. Definitely that is negative, right? Negative. Okay, it seems that in, in some places of El Salvador it's raining really, really hard and they're having problems with the class. But no problems because I think it is it's being recorded. So appropriate. Uh, this is a difficult word because it has two P's and then an R, then an O, P, R. So it's appropriate, right? It's kind of difficult to pronounce also. Bad form, bad form, probably uh, like in a bad way, right? Inappropriate, that is negative also, right? Inappropriate. Normal. Normal is like neutral, I guess. Offensive, right? You can be offensive or somebody can be offensive with you. Polite. Rude is a synonym also for offensive. Strange, strange can be kind of neutral. Typical and unusual. Typical, it's the antonym of unusual, right? So we have a little bit of vocabulary there. Let's see. Okay, you can see this in the video. Let me see how much time we have. And we these are some useful expressions like conversation openers. Sometimes we have to be um, like very polite with people and uh, we have to use like small talk. Some people don't like small talking, right? Like, hi, how, how is the weather, right? Oh, fine, beautiful. How are you today? Oh, yeah, good. And you? Oh, fine, right? You have to tell them, right? You have to ask them these kind of things to be kind and to be nice, right? And and also for you that you're, you, you're many of you are, are working on call centers, right? You use this kind of expression, right? They Sometimes they tell you, you have to, you have to ask them this, or you have to say, oh, it was a pleasure to help you. It was nice to to I will talk to you have a nice day right have a new one have, have a good one so uh, we have to use this kind of expression we have others here for small talking but um we have these uh more expressions right let's see somebody who hasn't participated yet alejandra are you there alejandra yes teacher can you read these expressions, please? I ran into my friend last week mm -hmm. on plane meeting. Mm -hmm. We decided to hang out, get together, or meet up. Mm -hmm. Informal meeting with friends. We were both up for, in the mood for anything. You want or you are willing to do something. Mm -hmm. My friend and I grabbed a bite to eat, went to a restaurant or food place. We coughed up, learned what is new in the other person's life. Mm -hmm. I want to make plans to meet, meet up again. My mm -hmm. friend will let me know, will keep me post when she is free, give mm -hmm. future information. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Uh, so we, these are some conversational expressions, right? Run into or run into is like you have an, an unplanned meeting. Hang out, like that is very, very common, right? To get together or meet up, to uh, gather with friends, right? Uh, up for, like we are both up for or we're, we were in the mood, right? You want to do something. Uh, grab the bite. Uh, we went to a restaurant or a food place. 
we caught up, right? So probably we are friends and we stop seeing each other. And then uh, we caught up, right? We uh, tell everything that happened in the past or the recent years or months, right? Meet up again, right? Like to get together again. And my friend will let me know or my friend will keep me posted, right? So they will give me future information. So these are some conversational expressions that we can use. Very good. Now, uh, we have a reading here just to practice, right? Are you able to, to see the, the reading? Can you see it? Yes? Yes. Okay, yes. perfect. So, um, Mercy, we're going to read just the first part, right? From two sides to every story until criticizing her manners. Can you read it, please? Uh, I'm checking where you, uh, until the end, okay. Uh -huh. uh, criticizing, okay. Two sides to every story. Mm -hmm. by news online reporter. Everyone knows it can be difficult to get along with your in-laws, but for 29 years old Haiti visitors, it may not be impossible. Haiti was invited to spend the weekend with her fiance, Freddy's family at their house. But soon after they returned home, Haiti received a uh, very nasty email from Caroline Bourne, Freddy's stepmother, criticizing her manners. Very good, perfect. So this reading is about this, right? Uh, the mother-in-law was criticizing um, the son's girlfriend, right? The son's girlfriend, because they spent a weekend in her fiance, Freddy's family house, right? Very good. So that is the, the story about, right? Let's see. Um, Mercy, choose someone else. Let's go to alguien más to read the, the next paragraph. Erasmo? Erasmo, are you there? Erasmo Perla? Uh, yes. Uh, uh... And okay, read from here are a few examples okay. until the last uh, have a stay, right? The, the last okay. sentence. Okay, of listen. Examples. And here are a fair examples of your leg of manners. Uh, when you are, I guess, in another person's house, you should do not uh, declare what you will and will not eat unless you are uh, allergic to something. Uh, you should not say that you do not hear enough food. You should not start before everyone else. Uh, you should not take extra healthy uh, with very invite to buy your sauce. Hot. Toast. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah. You should not only invite until the morning. And you should have sent a uh, hand rise, not after the visit. You have never waiting to take uh, with him. You have stayed. Okay, very good. So in this uh, paragraph, we can see that this a mother-in-law, she is criticizing and she is pointing out specifically what she didn't like, right? Uh, let's see, extra helpings. What is the meaning of that? You should not take extra helpings without being invited to by your host. Okay. What is the meaning of that, extra helpings? What is the meaning? What do you think is that? Additional help. I don't know, from the host to me, for example. Like to provide extra help? Mm, yes, or additional things. I, I don't know. To be honest, I don't know. 
<laughs> You're just but, guessing. Okay, it's okay uh -huh. to guess. It's okay to guess. Another person? Or do you have any idea what extra helpings is? Uh, uh, I think um, extra is additional, something mm -hmm. else. And helping is, uh, is help, uh, right? Help, yes. <laughs> Es uh, como una palmadita, sí, como una ayuda adicional. Ok, but imagine if you are, uh, are you married, Eliu? Yes. Yes, and do you get along with your uh, mother-in-law? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, right, ok, very I, good. Uh, how can I say me pica la lengua por decir algo? Me pica la lengua por decir algo. <laughs> okay. But let's say yes, right? Let's say. But yes. imagine, imagine that one day your mother-in-law says, I you, you should not take extra helpings without being invited to by your by your host. You should not take extra helpings, I'll you after the meal, after the dinner, right? Extra helpings is like raciones extra, right? Como que me voy a llevar este pedacito de arroz, este pedacito de pollo. So, and she tells you, no, Elio, you should not take extra helpings without my consent, right? Mm -hmm. right. So that is extra helpings. Okay. But uh, lucky for you that you get along with your mother-in-law, right? Very good. What is her name, Elio? It's Maria. It's uh, Maria Elena. Okay, Maria. It's a difficult person. It's a difficult <laughs> <laughs> no, probably not, not that difficult. Okay, but yes, yeah, sometimes we have this this kind of of relationship, right, with our in laws. Yeah, well, I you love know? her. I love, love, I love her so much. Different. I love her so, but she, I feel that she never be in in good shape with me. She never. She always. But you try. She, she always say, men. Uh, I don't know how to say in English exactly, but los hombres la riegan a la entrada o la riegan a la salida. Dice. <laughs> And what do you say? Yes, right? Yes, yes no, I, I yes. be quiet. I be quiet. Be quiet. So, <laughs> I am so, so prudent with, with my behavior with her because uh, I love her because he grew up three daughters mm -hmm. without his husband her husband mm -hmm. and that is one uh it's something it's that i respect for that i i uh, have a uh, i have a special admiration for that because he was a poor woman and he worked and he gave a career a university career to the three daughters mm -hmm. and working hard. And sure. I think that for that reason is 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 so so serious, so a strange person. He it's always strange. be quiet. He I I feel like I don't like her. <laughs> because, yeah probably <laughs> because my wife is is the I think is the, the Pre, pre, prefer, preference, 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 uh, doubt, doctor. Is her favorite? Her favorite doctor. Oh, yes. her favorite. Yeah. Okay. I uh, probably yes, probably. But she is really hard working, so probably yeah. that's probably that's why she is the way she is like that, right? Uh, yeah. 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 Exactly. But good <laughs> luck for you and your mother in love. That we almost <laughs> that that that. Oh. Is it because I feel happy to be alone in the in the in the, on the uh, in my in my farm in my small farm? I am happy here because you I am alone. Happy. I am my boss. I am my I am the, a cooker. I I do everything. I do uh, everything. Nobody here. tells you anything, right? Yes. Very good. Very good. We almost finished with the reading. Let's see the last paragraph. And Porfirio, are you there? Can you read the last one, please? Porfirio or Rosa Maria, are you there?
Hi. Yes, Rosa Maria, can you read the last paragraph? From Heidi was shocked until comments about the mother-in-law. Okay. Heidi was shocked and immediately sent the email on to some of her close friends. Surprised and almost amused. Amused the friends for Garrett it to other people and some the email had been posted on several websites with with two songs of people thousand of people greeting common about the mother in law okay very good very good perfect so um suddenly this became viral right that is the story about that probably nobody or some people are very like criticizing about this action because uh, the email went from one person to another person and then it went viral. And these are the comments that they did, right? Um, some comments were positive and some comments are negative, right? But we almost finished. We are going to finish the probably the reading tomorrow and we are going to check um i think that we are going to check the pronunciation uh, actually i think that you have a very good pronunciation people but there are some words as you mentioned before that is kind of difficult to pronounce right for example the ed or the s's right uh or some words that don't exist in english for example um in loss right in loss it's like an o right in loss or um, the S's, right? For example, story, right? It's not a story, but story, right? Or thousands, like the sound, it doesn't exist in, in Spanish. I understand that it's kind of difficult, but with a little bit of practice, and I'm going to emphasize that tomorrow, uh, we are going to, we are going to overcome it probably. I will, I will bring uh, the pronunciation that you mentioned before, the ED, and we are going to have also a listening. So you can read and you can listen how it is pronounced, uh, this kind of words. Actually, this class was more about this and also um, about the vocabulary. I'm going to stop here because you will see the answers, right? So um, tomorrow we are going to finish, hopefully, with... Um, the reported speech. So if you have any question about reported speech, try to finish the, um, tomorrow is Thursday, right? Yes. yes, yes, exactly. So on Friday, we won't have classes, right? You don't have classes on Fridays, right? Normally. No, normally, no. yes. Normally, okay. I would like to have class on Friday because I think that we won't be able to, to finish everything, but we will try, we will try. And I will bring extra information about the pronunciation. And also if you have any comment or anything like you want to study during these classes, uh, I will include it, okay? So you can write uh, everything in the group. Unfortunately, some of you were disconnected because it was raining heavily. Uh, but you will be able to watch the, the class uh, on YouTube. So do you have any question right now before finishing the class? Preguntas? Comments? I have a comment. Yes. It's, I like this. Uh, there are a lot of new vocabulary, vocabulary that we are learning. Uh, is uh, I like, and there are many rules, but sometimes I think, oh, how the child, how the children, how the how children can learn a language without rules and without uh, and without uh, uh, methods. I, I think like understanding grammar uh -huh, understanding grammar yes um, but uh, in the 
in the develop of of uh, of their life they they must learn they must learn grammar gra grammar or the, in any language any language yes um, um, and sometimes we it is it, because I I I like to I like to learn by heart every 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 rule and every but a something that go out go <laughs> it's not easy to learn to learn by heart every rule um, especially when you don't, when you don't practice or or you are not uh, studying a lot mm -hmm. or so, or uh, they uh, put time uh, additional time to study after after classes i think that we for all of us we need to repasar to, to study uh, individually individually and and try to practice if we want to learn uh, to 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 talk fluently because the, the the situation is that we are always think, thinking in in translating mm -hmm. the 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 conversation or, or we are writing we we are thinking in the, the the most difficult is to think in english you see something and you understand but uh, when you are uh, trying or, or maybe you need to study or or to hear uh, to listen a conference is a little uh, as, uh, as a small cent uh, a preposition or or, or something like a, like a extra helping that something like that word you don't you you lose in your in your in your comprehension. Uh, I don't know if, if if you understand my what I am thinking. It's like a like a like a thought something that I thought I say we we need to speak English. We are studying English. We have a lot of time studying rules and studying. Uh, uh, grammar, mm -hmm. but it is difficult to think in English. And ch children think in English without grammar. But this, is, this is my they they learn or or or, or, or learn Spanish or, or any language. Mm -hmm. I, I it's my I don't know if it, it's I confused to everybody. Yeah, yeah, actually, that's normal because you internalize language, right? You internalize language and you don't think about grammar. And that's why you have to, to you, we explain grammar for you to understand why, right? But once you internalize everything, it will be better. But that's what you have to do just to internalize English. It's difficult, I understand, but uh, it's a process, right? So as you yes. said, independently, you have to work on on your weaknesses or to, to improve your skills, right? Yeah. But we will try to help you. Like if that's, re that's the reason why I, tell, I ask you for feedback. And if you need something like more vocabulary or more reading or more listening for, tom for tom uh, tomorrow, I will bring that uh, information for the pronunciation. So try to be on time. And uh, if you have any question about the platform and uh, try to send me the information also, I will report, yeah, yo voy a reportar lo que usted dijo, Elio. Lo voy a reportar, okay. I will report that. Okay. So, no problem. So, uh, thank you for being here. I don't want to uh, stay more because I know that you're tired. So, we're going to finish right now, and I will see you tomorrow at 8, okay? Okay. Have a good evening. Have a good have night. Have a nice evening. Bye. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. Have a nice night.